there's no way to get object rotation in the shading window in Blender. We're gonna we're gonna fix that. So I have this math viewer open, which is gonna show us what the uh, it's gonna help us out because it's gonna show us the output values from some of the stuff that we're we're gonna do here. So this is essentially a graph. I will leave a link in the description to this tool because it is super useful. So the problem is Blender doesn't give us any rotation values for the object, and so we can't make uh, shaders that are based on the rotation of the uh, rotation of the object uh, without using drivers. And if you want to do this and use it on multiple different objects, you would have to create a new separate driver for each individual object, and that's a pain in the ass, so we're not going to do that. And to do that, we're going to start by making a, a vector. We're going to use combine XYZ here to make, to make our vector, and I'm just going to set the X to negative 1, and then I'm going to add a a vector transform set to normal and plug this in here and essentially what we're doing is we're defining a vector that's going to uh, you know essentially be coming out of one face of our object so in this case it's uh, negative X and it doesn't really matter what it is um, but this does have a limitation so we're gonna we're gonna fix that limitation by creating a duplicate of this using a different vector direction that'll make a little bit more sense as we go so the next thing I'm going to do is because this, so this right now is a vector in normal space, we need to translate it into color space, and we're going to use that as a factor to drive essentially uh, the color of our object. So in order to do that, we're going to um, add a mix RGB. We're going to set the factor to one and plug that in. And that value here, because this is, it's a color value, so it's a three vector. So we have three channels, red, green, and blue, that are being multiplied by the red, green, and blue channels of the second color here. And this by default is set to 0.5. So if I open this up and I go to RGB, you can see that red, green, and blue are each set to 0 0.5 by default here. And then, so we've multiplied that by 0.5, uh, and then we're gonna essentially duplicate this node and set it to add 0.5. And what we're essentially doing there is transforming this vector from a scale of negative one to one uh, to a scale of zero to one because Blender uses zero to one as the scale for, for color space. Now the next thing that we're do, gonna do is we're going to, uh, we're gonna add a separate RGB node here and we're gonna plug that color into the color slot on the separate RGB so that we have the red, green, and blue channels of that of that color vector essentially coming out coming out separately. Uh, and I'm gonna plug this into the, uh, into the uh, the math viewer so that we can see what's going on here. So I'm going to plug, I'm going to plug the uh, the red channel into the X, and if you see, what will happen is when we rotate this in X, nothing happens because we're referencing the X axis in, in creation of this vector. But if we rotate it on Z, you can see that the line actually moves. And so what's happening is the more that we rotate it, the uh, the more essentially that the value is is going up so it's going on a scale from zero to one where i believe the rotation of value one is 180 degrees now there is a problem here uh what's coming out of this red channel is not actually just the uh the rotation value for the z-axis it's actually a composite of two axes so it's essentially everything other than other than the the axis that we are referencing at the start so x-axis rotating on x does nothing here there's no change in output so it's always going to come out as zero but if i rotate on y we get some movement essentially right so this is just sort of a visual representation of the fact that what's coming out of this this red channel here is uh, the rotation values in the z-axis and also in y now what's coming out of the green and blue channels here are the values that are associated with rotation on those respective axes. So green, if I grab this green channel and plug it in here, you can see that it's got a default value of 0 0.5. And if I, if I rotate this, oops, if I rotate this along X, nothing is happening. If I rotate this along Z, it is moving. But if I rotate this along Y, nothing is happening. And so whereas this top channel here was coming out of the red channel as a composite, uh, this middle channel here is actually only the rotation value on a scale of zero to one on the Z axis. And if I rotate it one way, you can see it goes down. If I rotate it the other way, you can see it goes up. 
but there is a problem here. It's not really technically a problem, but it will make things a little bit confusing because what's coming out of the green channel here actually is not the rotation on what we would typically associate with the green channel. If you look up here in the Blender gizmo, uh, you can see that green is color coded as Y. So the three axis colors are generally coded so that X, Y, Z equals RGB. And that's what we, what we want to be the output of this, just so that it's a little less confusing to work with. So I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna add a combine RGB note. I'm gonna plug it here and I'm gonna plug the output of that green channel into the blue so that the Z rotation is coming out of the blue channel. And because we have Y rotation here, we can also take that, that blue channel and plug it into the, to the green of this combined RGB. And now this, this output is giving us two of the three channels that we need. Now we're not getting any X rotation on any of this. So the way to fix that is uh, actually to duplicate this whole thing. So we can't, I'm sure there's some vector math wizard out there who probably has a better method that might work uh, you know, without duplicating this, but I'm gonna duplicate it because that's the way that I know how to do it. And set this X value from minus one back to zero, and I'm gonna set the Z value instead to minus one. And that is actually going to be the green channel here. And just to confirm, I'll just, I'll plug it into the math node here. You can see we currently have a value of zero. And if I rotate in X, then we're getting, we're getting some movement there. So now I will plug this into, I'll plug this into the red channel. And so now what's coming out of here is we have essentially a three vector coming out of this color image slot here, which is red, green, and blue, corresponding to the rotation on a scale of zero to zero to one in X, Y, and Z. Now that's a little cumbersome to use. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this and I'm going to hit group, which you can you can either just click to select here or just hit control G and that will group it. And we don't need an input because there's no input coming from anything going into this node group. It's just using the rotation of the object that the material is applied to. And then we're gonna plug this image output into the group output. And that'll give us the sort of the three color value outputs of this. Uh, however, I am also going to add one more thing here, which is a, I'm gonna add another separate RGB node here. And I'm just gonna plug the image in here and I'm gonna plug these in here, RG and B. That way, if we want to have, um, we want to have those color values separated by this node group we don't have to add any more nodes in later if for example we only want to drive our material by the rotation of a single axis uh, object rotation perfect so i'll say i'll save this node i'll put a link to it in the description and let's have a look at how to use it so i have a default cube here we're going to make a new material so i'm going to go to the materials panel uh, i'll just delete this and add a new one and we're going to call this rotation based color and then in our shader editor window I'm going to uh, add that node group now if you've never added node groups before the way you do it is you go to file uh, append and then you select from your local and then you just select the uh, the file that contains that and go to node tree node group so if I go to shift A now and group, node group, it will paste it in here. And if I hit select it and hit tab, you can see it's got all of that stuff that we created here. All right, so I'm gonna hit shift A, search and add a color ramp. And the way that this will work because it's on a scale of zero to one and the default value for these is going to be for rotation is going to be 0 0.5 so the middle of the scale whatever color you have here in the center so if you click the little plus and add one more here in the middle uh, let's make this red is going to be the default state of your object before any rotation so i'm gonna i'm gonna take this red channel here which is the rotation in the x-axis and plug it into the factor and then I'm gonna plug this into the base color. And you can see that here on the left, we have black and on the right, we have white. So 
Rotation in, in the uh, sort of negative direction is going to make it more black. Rotation in the positive direction is going to make it more white along the x-axis. So if I hit R and X to rotate, if I rotate it right, it turns white. If I rotate it left, it turns black. And you can use this to get all sorts of, you know, potentially cool effects. We can add, you know, a whole bunch more of these handles and give it all kinds of, all kinds of colors. And then when you rotate your object along that axis, it'll use that data to drive essentially the position of the color ramp that it's, that it's at. And that's it. That's how you do it. I'll leave a link to my object rotation note in the description.